Return on investment, ROI. It's the number one thing you can be doing to impress actuarial employers. I'm Bria, associate of the Society of Actuaries and leader of the Actuary Accelerator community. So before we go any further, we need to get into some of the nitty gritty actuary stuff. This is stuff that you're actually gonna need for your career. So it's really important that you understand it for that, but also for this video. So ROI is a really interesting calculation because it really puts into perspective how much an investment is going to pay off. It can help you decide which investment you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck on. So businesses and insurance companies included have lots of different opportunities to invest. So actuaries are often responsible for doing these ROI calculations to determine which investments the insurance company should invest in. ROI is calculated like this. So essentially you have to take the net financial benefit of the investment and divide it by the financial cost of the investment. And when I say net financial benefit, what I mean there is you're going to take the total financial benefit and subtract the cost. That's going to give you the net financial benefit. So with this calculation, you're going to learn whether your investment is going to 2x double itself or whether it's going to 6x, whether it's going to 100x, or maybe you'll even learn that the investment actually is going to cause you to lose money. Now, if you're like me, you probably like examples better than explanations. So we're going to go through a few examples right now to really hit home how ROI is calculated and how it can be beneficial in an actuarial position. So now let's say you're an actuary and you've been asked to decide for the company whether the company should invest in option one which is a new technology to help automate a process or if you should keep investing in option two is to keep your employees to continually do the job manually you've been asked which one is best for the company now for option one purchasing the new software let's say the benefit is going to be a hundred thousand dollars and the cost is going to be ten thousand dollars so the ROI calculation is going to look like this so this ROI calculation shows that you're going to be able to 9x your money or increase your money by 900% if you invest in option number one. Now let's look at option number two. So the benefit is going to be the same because we're essentially achieving the same goal. We're just using different methods. So the benefit is still going to be $100,000. And for this one, the cost is going to be $200,000. So our ROI calculation looks like this. And if you do this calculation, you see that we get a negative 0.5 ROI calculation. And that means that you're actually going to be losing money because the ROI calculation is negative and in this particular case you're going to lose 50% of your money so which one would you choose right now based on ROI calculation alone you'd probably choose to go with investment number one or option number one because that one is actually going to 9x your money whereas the other one you're losing money and you don't want to do that in most cases but quick side note here ROI isn't the only calculation that actuaries would take into consideration here you have to consider other things because getting the best return on your money might not be the only reason reason for doing this project. The actuary would also have to consider different things like the capacity that the insurance company has to complete such a project. They'd have to consider how long it will take. They'd have to consider other factors that might increase the risk with either option. So there are other things to take into consideration other than just ROI. So now let's look at another calculation that's a bit more complex. And actually this one will be more relatable to you. I'm sure there are times in your life where you've calculated ROI. It might have not been intentionally, but it's things that you do in the back of your mind automatically and you're doing them all the time when you're deciding what you should invest in for yourself. So let's look at an example that you've probably been in yourself where you maybe considered purchasing resources to help you get an actuarial job. So for the financial benefit portion of the ROI calculation, you probably took into consideration things like the value of getting an actuarial job. So let's say in your first year, that's gonna be about $50,000. You probably took into consideration things like the amount of time you're gonna save. Time is important to consider because your time has a value. You can go out and work for a company and they'll pay you for your time. So that means that your time has value and it should be included in an ROI calculation for sure. So let's say these resources will help you save 100 hours of your time. Most likely it's going to be more, but we'll be conservative and say 100 hours. If your time is worth $15 an hour, then that's $1,500 for this portion. Now you also maybe considered things like the access that you'd get to actuarial professionals that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise and we'll count that as a thousand dollars. Now there are probably other things that you consider too, but we'll just use these three things. So that means that your total benefit is going to be about 56,500. Now in the ROI calculation, you also had to compare this to the financial cost. So let's just use the actuary accelerator community for this example. No one's probably going to pay more than $1,800 for the actuary accelerator community throughout the time that they're in there. So 1,800 is kind of the maximum investment that someone would expect. So if we put this in the ROI calculation, we get an 
ROI calculation of 30. So this is exactly the reason why you probably decided that you would invest in these resources or that you're going to invest in these resources because they have a huge payoff. And that's not even taking into consideration all the income that you're going to earn from future years working in that actuarial role, right? That's just your first year. So it's like a no brainer that you're going to invest in these resources, right? Okay, so now I think you have a really good understanding of how the ROI calculation works, how it could apply to actuarial work, how it applies to your own work, and that's given you a good foundation. So now let's get into the good stuff. How does this relate to impressing actuarial employers? So we've already established that your time is worth money. If you can go out and work for a company and make money, then that means your time has value. So if companies are willing to pay you for your time, then that means that they are likely planning to make a positive ROI on the money that they spend on you. So that means that for every single hour that you work, they are planning to make more off of that hour than they spent to pay you. Otherwise, why would they continue paying you, right? So positive ROI is what companies want and the bigger the ROI, the better. So if that's what companies want, then that's what you need to prove to employers you're going to be able to do. Seems simple, right? And it is, it just means that you're going to have to start thinking about all the companies that you've worked for in the past and the company that you're working for right now and figure out how they're ultimately making a positive ROI by investing in you. How are you increasing the financial benefit portion of the ROI calculation for them? Did you increase revenue for them somehow? Did you save them time? Remember, time is worth money. Did you reduce costs for them? Did you increase customer loyalty? All these are ways that you could positively be contributing to their ROI calculation and it's probably why they're continuing to pay you. There are lots of ways that you can be increasing that financial benefit portion of the ROI calculation for a company. So if you can quantify these things in percentages and dollars, then that's going to help employers really see the value and the benefit that you have brought to other companies. And that's going to make them feel more comfortable that you can do the same thing for them. Okay, so now instead of putting things on your resume, like you completed the monthly bookkeeping activities or you sent invoices to customers and paid bills on time, you can instead talk to the ROI that you created for the company. So you can put things like saved 32 hours per month by automating the bookkeeping processes with VBA, totaling $7,000. $680 in savings per year or followed up with customers regarding late payments collecting an average of $2,439 in late payments per month. These are the things that actuarial employers really care about and those are the things you should add to your resume. So now if this video has made you think about your resume in a whole new way make sure you give it a thumbs up so it can spread to more aspiring actuaries and now we'll get to the question of the week. What is one thing you're doing right now for a company that you work for that is increasing the financial benefit portion of their ROI calculation on you. Let me know down in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.